Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for obeying the Holy Ghost this morning and worshiping God. Amen. Yes. Praise God. God has already done a work in this place today. Praise God. I want us to look into the Word because it seems like everything just kind of went along with the Word from the from the Sunday school class on, on into now. And somebody said, well, probably when I start reading it, it don't seem like it, but give me time. All right. Listen. Bless him, Lord Jesus. Praise God. We're going to 2 Samuel, starting with the 11th chapter and verse 26. When the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. When the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Praise God. I want to stop right there and just ask you to lift your hands and, and ask God's anointing to come down in this place today. God, we need you today, Lord. We need your touch. We need your anointing. God, we ask, Lord, that you just use us, God, for thy glory today. God, in our hearts and ears to receive your word today. We'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Praise God. And you can be seated. Let's continue to worship God and let God talk to your heart uh, in this place today. The Bible said, it, and you know the story of David, how that instead of going out to battle, the Bible said that David stayed home. And there as he, he stayed home, he was on his rooftop and, and saw uh, a woman by the name of Bathsheba, which he soon that was married to Uriah, and he soon had her brought uh, to his house or to his bed and committed adultery with her. And instead of admitting his mistake or admitting his sin, he went on and had uh, Uriah put to the front line and had him killed in battle. David, David was guilty of not only adultery, he was guilty of murder. You find that uh, and when in verse 26 we read, and when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife and bare him a son. Look at this last verse. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Could I tell you this morning that sin displeases God? Sin displeases God. And I, you, you would be surprised. I looked up the word displeased from the Hebrew word that it was translated from. And it simply means to be enraged or angry. God was enraged at David for what yes, he had committed. Lord. I wonder today how many times we displeased God. He was enraged at David. You see, David had thought he'd, he'd, he'd hit it. David had thought that he had covered it up. But he would soon be found out. For just a little while this morning, I, I just want to preach to you, teach to you, or speak to you on sin and true repentance. Sin and true repentance. Right. You find that as we began, David thought he had all of this covered up and he thought he was in the clear now. But the Bible begins to tell us uh, that we have to be careful because our sins will find us out. Amen. The Bible said this displeased God. Numbers 32 and 23 says this, But if we will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Yes. You know, we're, we're not getting away with nothing. We're not hiding nothing from God. Amen. God knows all about it, and you can be sure somewhere down the road if you continue in sin, your sin will find you out. Yes, it will. Just as David began to realize as Nathan began to pay him a visit. In Amen. the 12th chapter of verse 1, And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, 
There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. And the rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds. But the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nursed up, and it grew up together with him and with his children, did indeed eat of his own meat and drink of his own cup, and lay in his bosom, and was unto, unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was to come. And verse 5, And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. See, sometimes we, we are quick to look and to judge and to determine the sin of others Uh-oh. and easily see them, but we fail to see the things that we try to hide from God. Amen, that's right. Praise God. I, you would be surprised, and maybe you wouldn't, when we began to examine our lives and, and begin to look at our lifestyle and you know, even though sometimes we say, oh, I live for God. I serve God. But if you if you will take note, if you will begin uh, to study and look at your life and your lifestyle, I don't think it would take you very long to realize it's not about God, but it's all about me. My, my, my. Huh? I'm afraid our lifestyles reflect that it's just that it's not it's not all about God all the time. It's more about us when we begin to take inventory of our lives and the way we serve God and the way we live for God. We'll find sometimes that uh, uh, it's simply a whole lot about me and not as much about God as I thought it was. Amen. Praise God, because simply sometimes what we what we want. Overrules what God wants. Nah, nah, that's right. Huh? <laughs> that's right. Because sometimes, if we're not careful, our lifestyle reflects that what we want a lot of times overrules what God wants. Yes. Praise God. We say we serve God. We say we live for God. And I, I hope we do to the best of our ability. But every once in a while, we need to, we need to make a checkup on our lives and see which really priorities do come first in our life. Hmm. See, our lifestyle will reflect that. It'll reflect whether it's more about me and what I want. Uh Or whether it's what God wants in my life. Amen. If I chose to follow Him, He said, take up your cross and follow me. Yes, sir. Praise God. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Amen. Uh oh, that, that, that loses a lot of us right there if we're not qu- careful. Because we're not quick to deny ourselves of anything. That's right. He said, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. But David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. He shall surely die, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thou art the man. You know, whether we like to admit it or not, sometimes we just have to look in the mirror and say, You're the man. You're the man that caused the trouble, that trouble in my life. You're the man that got me off track. You're the man that wanted this and wanted that instead of God. So sometimes we just have to stand and look in the mirror instead of blaming people around us for our our, our, our fall or our sin and just have to say, well, you're the man. Mm-hmm. You're the man. So, so we look and you go on. And I don't know if I had this down, but I, I want to drop on down to verse 12, it, it, Nathan told him, he said, For thou did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel, before the Son. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathaniel said unto David, The Lord has also put away thy sin. 
and thou shalt not die. So we find the sin in David's life. But if we begin to, to look and we begin to, and the Bible called David a man after God's own heart. Amen. David knew how to do two things. He knew how to worship and he knew how to repent. Amen. I'm afraid too many of us have got the worship part down without the repentance. Huh? I said, I'm afraid if we're not careful, a lot of us have got the worship part down without the repentance. No, no, no. John the Baptist came on the scene and he said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus came on the scene and in one place, he told him, he said, that unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. That's right. So sometimes we, we look and we see and David began to realize, yeah, it's out now. It's not secret anymore. Because his sin had found him out. But David didn't let it turn him bitter. David didn't let it turn him away from God. That's right. David didn't let it destroy him. Thank God. But what David did was turn to God in repentance. <clears throat> he began to realize, he said, I, I've sinned against God. I've got to do something about this. Mm -hmm. I've sinned against God. And David paid the price for his sin. The Bible said, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth that shall he also reap. Amen. We look at that, or look, we can look at that in two different ways. Now, a lot of times we, we look at it concerning sin and concerning maybe the wild oats that we've sowed. You know, we, we, we've got to reap a lot, a lot of times what we've sown. But we can also turn that around. If I sow good seed, yes. if I sow good things, if I sow a good crop, I'm going to reap a good crop. Yes, right sir. Right. Praise God. Praise God. But David, David's sin turned him to true repentance. You can find, you can find David's psalm of repentance. In Psalms 51, this, this was after Nathan had come to him. David began to write the Psalms. You know, sometimes we just simply need God to wipe the slate clean and give us a brand new start. Amen. And the way to do that, and he'll do that if we repent. Mm -hmm. He'll wipe the slate clean. He'll give us that brand new start. He'll give us that new beginning. Praise God. But we've got to want to change. We've got to want God. We've got to, We want God to fix things for us. Mm -hmm. But we've got to be willing to repent yes, and sir. let God take care of it. We've got to repent and to be willing to follow after the Word of God. You know, it's one thing. You know, it's, it's one thing maybe to rebel against the man of God. But it's another thing to rebel against God and His Word. Amen. It's an entirely different thing. And, and sometimes, if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves rebelling uh, against uh, uh, the, the principles and, and, and uh, of the Word of God. We wonder sometimes when we do these things, why am I not being blessed? Why am I not being blessed? Well, it goes back to what we were talking about a while ago. Check, check your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. See if you're really putting God first. See if God is the center of your life. I thought about, and I thought about it this week, and it, it, it read it over. I thought about it in the book of Ezekiel, where it was talking about the wheel in the middle of the wheel. If God is the center of my life, He's the hub of that wheel. Right? Yes, he's he in is. the middle. And everything else revolves around the center or the hub of that wheel. Everything in my life ought to revolve around God. Yes, sir. Everything, every decision I make ought to revolve around God. Amen. Everything that I do ought to revolve Would God be pleased with this? Would God be pleased with this? 
Does my life really revolve? Is Jesus really the center of my life? Is He really first in my life? We can give ourselves a spiritual checkup this morning. We find that there's some, sometimes we, David, and I'm going to get into it, David, David began to realize he sinned against God. And David wanted to feel clean again. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. David wanted that relationship he had with God restored again. He began to write Psalms 51. See, sometimes, sometimes all we need is God just to wipe us away clean, give us a new beginning. There, there, there's nothing I can do about what I've done yesterday. Unless I've wronged somebody and then I can go to them and ask forgiveness. Mm -hmm. But David began to write and he said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin." Against thee, and thee only. David didn't, David didn't blame nobody else for his fault. David didn't blame nobody else for his sin. But he said, Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. He's, David, David what, what, what did David do? He realized his sin. And he realized the only way to God was repentance. But he also accepted the fact whatever judgment God put on him, he deserved it. Mm -hmm. But he said, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity. The Bible says we're all born in sin. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inner part, and the hidden part shalt thou make me know to no know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. He wanted to feel clean. Mm -hmm. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. David said, I know how to worship. I know how to worship God. Give me back to that place that when I do, there's joy in my worship. There's joy in my praise. There's joy in my life. He said, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Creating me a clean heart. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Take not. Now you've got to realize something. When David, David wrote down, Created me a clean heart, renew within me a right spirit, Cast me not from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. He had already saw and already seen that happen to Saul. David had already seen that, that, that Spirit of God depart from Saul. And that evil spirit that came upon Saul. David, 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 David was saying, God, I don't want that. I don't want that. Nobody in their right mind would want that. That's right. So he, in his prayer of repentance, he said, he said, God, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And he said, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Sin and true repentance could I tell you, true repentance is going to bring a change in your life. True repentance will make you feel clean. Yes, it will. True repentance will cause the joy of the Lord to return to your life. Sure, sure, sin may have entered. Sure, we may have messed up and sin may have got control of us. 
But there is a way out. There is a new beginning. God will wipe the slate clean and give you a brand new start today. If, if, if you're truly, you know, and you've heard it said Very before, I'm going to say it too. Some people are just sorry they got caught. Mm. All right. <laughs> and when that repentance is gone, they're back at it again. You know, a, lot, a lot of people, a lot of people repent long enough just to get over that. Make them feel feel better about about the sin they just committed. You know, until until that wears off, the guilt kind of wears off, and they're back at it again. David realized his sin, and he turned to true repentance. He sincerely desired God to change him. He desired God to change him. True repentance. One place, John told the Pharisees, and say, he, said, he said, you bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. In other words, I, I need to see some evidence that you repented. Praise God. You know, all God's looking for in, in your life is some evidence that you repented. Amen. He's just looking for some evidence that you repented. Praise God. When he forgave the woman that was caught in the very act of adultery, he simply told her, Neither do I condemn thee, but go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. True repentance. There's sin, but then there's true repentance that will bring forgiveness of those sins in your life. I was like, God's not willing that any should perish, but Amen. that all should come to repentance. God don't want you to die lost. No, sir. I said, God don't want you to die lost. That's right. But I, could I tell you this morning, sin in your life unrepented of will cause you to be lost. That's why God gives us opportunities like today on a rainy Sunday morning. That if we need God just to wipe the slate clean and give us a brand new start, His mercy yeah. and His grace is still extending unto you. And this morning He's saying, Come, I'll forgive you. Come, I'll give you that Amen. brand new start. Come, I'll change your life. And you don't have to go back to that old lifestyle anymore. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I believe already this morning we've seen some true repentance. I believe God's already touched some lives today. Yes, and as you stand this morning, I'm going to give an invitation to some others sitting out there. Maybe you feel like, maybe it has been nothing bad. Maybe you haven't done nothing wrong. But you just want God to wipe the slate clean. God, I messed up too much. Last week and the week before, the month before, I messed up too much. And I just want you to wipe the slate clean. Amen. And give me a brand new start today. Praise God. Bless you to come.